Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. So today we're gonna to have a little fun doing some ink and wash and a little value study, painting a lovely windmill from Santorini. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you a reference photo. Uh, you can find the link in the description box below and talk about just painting light, mid and dark values. And there's very minimal dark values here, but they, you know, they really come to life with the windows, etc., etc. some of the shadows. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. It's really kind of fun just to play with simple ink and wash. You know, you're just drawing out all the little shapes and then going in and washing in the color. And I'll show you like where I washed in the sky and it was streaky. I went back over one more time to get a little bit more cohesive flat color, but because I mixed two colors, it has a little bit of different wash gradation to it. And you can play with that too. You can, it doesn't have to be a perfect flat wash. It can be all kinds of things happening. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. So without further ado, let's go take a trip to Santorini. All right, to begin this ink and wash um, tutorial, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I'm gonna be drawing on. So I have this drawn here. I've given you the reference photo in the description. You can see the link there for this, the windmill that's in Santorini. Um, and Patreon members get the trace for this, but you can trace out your own. And I'm using Fabriano's cold pressed paper. This is the bright white because I really like the white because of the white buildings. It's perfect. This is a great kind of tutorial if you're just starting out with watercolor because it's going to teach you about tonal values as well as playing with ink and wash, something different. Now, I've had some comments saying, oh, when I use a Sharpie pen, my it, the ink bleeds into my watercolor. No, not if you're using a permanent marker. This is the Sharpie permanent ultra fine point marker. Do not get the Sharpie pen that's like this. You see right here? This is the no bleed pen that you'd use for a sketchbook so it doesn't bleed through the paper. This bleeds through the paper on a sketchbook. This will not. This you do not want to use with watercolor because it will bleed to the watercolor. You want the permanent one for the watercolor. This is the non-permanent one. This is the one that won't bleed on the paper. For This is great for a sketchbook but not for watercolor. Uh, and these come in different you know, whisks for the pen. This is a fine one, but do not get the, make sure it says the old traditional Sharpie here. It's gray and black and it says ultra fine point and it says permanent marker. This is the one we're gonna use. So I like to use it on, you can use it on a hot press or cold press, either or, but like a nice bright white paper. Um, you can try it on hot press, try it out. And all you're gonna do is take your, little area, all your little shapes, and you're gonna just take your pen. Now, I, I like to draw it first and then go back in and go in, wash the color in. You see that? And you can make it as really serious drawing or kind of get more sketchy, just kind of go really fast and loose, which I kind of tend to like to do, um, you know, with the windmill especially, kind of going crazy over here, just draw a little, little, uh, I don't know what you would call these things <laughs> for the windmill, but um, yeah, you go like this. You're just kind of going really kind of quickly. You're seeing what everything is and just kind of throwing in, just like if you were there doing urban sketching, similar. Only I'm giving you the photograph and we're drawing it from the photograph, as you can see, right? There's little teeny, you can barely see the little teeny strings coming in if you want to kind of put those in. That might help too. They kind of connect a little bit. Uh, I got to see this actual windmill in person at my retreat. Well, after my retreat in Greece, I'm going to Santorini. So just gonna put all, gonna draw all this in. So I sped this up just to show you, but you're just gonna draw all the little buildings, all the little lines that you see, the windows, etc., with this Sharpie pen. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk about washing in lights, medium and dark value tones. All right, so now we have it drawn out. We're gonna concentrate on our tones. We have mid-tones, light tones and darks, right? Now you can say that the mid-tone obviously is all the sky, right, on this picture. And then you have mid-tones. You can kind of say they're a little bit lighter but they kind of fall into that this area, this area, all the little dark areas on the, you know, on the sides of the shadows. And then of course the light tones of all the whites that you can see. Now this is really like a bright photograph. So we might actually exaggerate a little more. 
And then the dark tones would be the windows and the deep shadows that you see here, like the little windows in here, all those little details of the, the railing, the shadow here, on the stairs, the stairs, uh, the tread, not the treads, but the, um, the risers on the stairs here. You know, you can paint in between those and there's some dark ones. And then this is like a beigey kind of thing. You don't have to paint everything to the T though. You don't have to paint everything exactly you see. So I wasn't originally gonna paint the sky, but I decided I was gonna paint the sky. So it's just really kind of, is a negative painting behind this lovely backdrop of the, the buildings that are white in this blue sky. The photograph is a little, probably a little bit brighter than what I have here. And you can change the sky whatever color you want. It's more of like a cerulean blue, which, blue, which I do not have but I can play, play around with the blue. I'll take ultramarine blue deep here. I'm using a number 12 Neptune series from Princeton. I'm gonna grab some peacock blue and mix these two together. Let's come up with a nice unique blue that looks very much like Greece. <laughs> Everything's blue and white, right? And I'll play around with if I see if I like that color by just doing a little swatch. Grab a scrap piece of paper. Now, like I said, the photograph shows it to be more of a muted, so you might add little gray tones to that. So you might add some burnt sienna, and it's gonna tone it down if you wanna follow exactly to the T. I kinda like the bright, see this is matching it nicely. That's the burnt sienna color. But if you want, don't want it so like, mm, I don't have to follow that color. Maybe I want it brighter. I'll go back and add my blue and my peacock color. I'm getting more of a cerulean blue. And then I'll water it down even more. It's very wet. And also paint consistency. This is tea, almost like the water itself. If it's too wet, you can always tap it on a paper towel or a sponge. And that's kind of like the color I like. So I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna use number 12 and be very conscious about going around my little buildings here and kind of move fast. So I'll go in here See how loose that is? Try and go around these buildings, even with this little tip here, really quickly. I don't mind, you can paint around the little windmill spikes or not. It's up to you. I think it's not a big deal. I just really want to make sure that I'm painting around the little buildings below. And I taped the outside edge with just Scotch Magic tape. There we go. Once you have the outline, then you can really easily fill this in with your color. This is wet on dry. Just fill it all in. Just that intense color of the sky. Lovely Grecian sky. Now, if it's too light, you could do another pass it's up to you. And just fill it in. This is a big, so all the medium tones fill the whole, the biggest shape in your photo, in your painting. Is the biggest shape will be, connective shape will be the medium tone. Um, if we just did all this in black and white, this would be like a medium gray, and then we go and do the gray tones here. But we're doing it in color, so it's similar. So if you decided to try this out first in just grays or all just blues, and this is the medium tone, then you can do that. We're gonna step it up a notch and make some gray. I'm actually gonna lift some of this paper up, paint up, because I don't want the same color. Okay, I probably won't be using this big brush though, but I will mix up the color. So ultramarine blue and burnt sienna make great grays. They make beautiful grays. And what's great about those two colors mixing together, it's a nice graded wash color but also various tones of the gray. So it's very unique and pretty. It's not that this like flat paints gray color. You can add a little more blue to it, a little more of this lovely burnt sienna, so it's a little more brown. Again, you can play with the color, so it's gray. Do you want it this color? I think that works good. So I'll switch the brush, as that's a really big brush. Maybe get like an eight, a 10 round, Velvet Touch series from Princeton. Oh, that had something on my brush. That happens sometimes. <laughs> so I'll just lift that up. Okay, I have my color here still. And I'm gonna play, look around and see where all the medium tones are. Kind of, these kind of are the similar tones. 
some might be a little bit darker so here we go I'll fill this in here this facade should be all in color and it's probably a little bit darker than the photograph but we're going to do it that way just for value study right so this is kind of the same tone medium tone here there is no rules that it has to be a certain value study for this and it goes down here as well there are little small spaces here uh, this little color here and here just look around your paper you see this is one big shape coming down here just filling it all in You really just break down when you see something like this it's very busy and it might seem overwhelming but just break it down into like squares and rectangles and triangles and things like that and so you won't get overwhelmed right so here's that shape that's the same mid-tone shape one big shape you squint your eye there's not a lot of the same I'll squint my eye over here this one over here this is much darker but we can just go put that in anyway and then even under here the whole thing these little cave like structures this is lighter we could have done it lighter and just kept that I think I'm gonna kind of keep it white we have the medium mid-tone you could make this section a little bit light light because so this one comes through and in this section on the windmill so I want to make this a little bit more gray gray instead of blue gray you can put the color on the side here and we're going to do what we call the gradiated we're going to soften the edges so once you put the color down like that you're going to clean off your brush tap it on a paper towel clean it off you hear me cleaning that tapping paper towel and just grabbing the edges and kind of moving the edges slowly so this softens see but you could have just a straight old line too now I decided to soften them like this leave it like that it has a pink tinge to it I'm doing more grays you don't have to get fussy if you wanted to have the pink because you can see some pinks happening in the photograph it's up to you um, if we're going to do that we'll just remove some color and we'll take some bright rose I know it's very bright and add some burnt sienna rose burnt sienna more burnt sienna maybe a tad of the blue tap Not too much water this down let's see the color it's almost like an orange can add a little more pink so you have like a blush tone play with that so you can see that blushy kind of tone happening in the doorway in here again medium tone and we'll have darker tones this is the light color first you see this light blushy color happening around this paper here and I'll move it around wherever I see it and at the very end we add in the deeper values so I'm moving around the paper with this blush tone some areas might be darker just filling in all the ones I see that have that pretty color and we can kind of play with adding a little bit of this pink in here and water it down even more because it was kind of in and adding it to the side of the building you see that clean up my brush and blend it voila I don't want it to blend down here so I'll clean that off so then we have our basic midtones we have one more down here I don't know why it's looking kind of green. Big one, a big shape. They can be various tones, I mean various colors, right? But they're all the same. So you squint your eye and you see that even this is blue, this is more bluish gray, 
they all kind of have, except for the light, light pink, the similar tonality. And you come down here, there's that medium tone by the little, oh, these like little domes that they have. And we can use the technique of just blending. Voila. All these little simple techniques. It's a little bit darker with the pink tinge to it. You're going to get real technical in here. A little bit of white with a little bit of that pink. And then kind of just tapping and moving it, blending. And look around if you're missing any more. So if you could water this down even more to get it lighter. So with watercolor, the only way to get it light, you can't add white to it. You put more water. And if it's really wet on your brush, grab paper towel. You tap it on the paper towel and then you can paint it. So this area is like a really light, light gray. It's a light tone. We could have painted that first and then did the mid-tone. You can do either or. This would just stay white. You're going to see all your light tones here. I'm going to fill some of these in. This would stay white. See back here very light tone and then there's white white right there's light mid and dark and get a little bit of brown pinky color if you get like a light light brown happening back here and then a little fence now we're going to get even darker right so we've got some browns happening i'll take some thick brown sienna i'll add some paints gray Right, it makes a nice thick brown. Still using the tip of this brush. Um, some of the areas look maybe a little reddish. You can add a little cadmium red light. It's up to you, we we'll just leave it brown. Doesn't really matter. That's around the windows. You wanna test to make sure that then they're, they're dry before you go and put the little brown around the windows. So you're gonna fill this stuff in now, All right? You're gonna look around and see there's little brown taps Dark color here, the roof. Just, there's so many small little details. Tap, 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 just sticking where the brown is. Not too much brown. And then of course, the lovely little thatch roof. So kind of mix that brown with the blue. I'll just start off really light. It's kind of light on one side on the left-hand side, and it gets much darker on the right which is kind of funny because the shadow is here, but the shadow from this windmill is making the shadow here. It has to get a little bit darker still. I might grab burnt umber and some paints gray. Mix up the really deep brown and just kind of blend that tippy tap with the tip of my brush and that little thatched area and definitely down here where the other area is. All right, we're almost there. You might need a little color back here. You can play around with adding in little grays. But you see what I'm saying? We, we mixed some of the grays already. You can go back in them. Some of my grays look a little blue. I mean, not green. <laughs> so I'm going back in using my grays here. Altering blue. So if you need to add more color, like this area probably needs a little bit more shading. I'll go back in here, fill in some more shading. It can be a little bit bluer, but you go through all the areas that you have. This one has a little deep shading right here, down here, mixing up those same ultramarine blue and deep and burnt sienna. And you can see this, maybe this is a little bit darker here, shading, and then in here. See, now we're getting the darker shading in here. Blue, that's sienna. You get the two colors basically not even using any water hardly at all. You get that nice dark color, almost like black. And you can fill that in there. And the areas that you see, they're really dark, kind of like down here. Just go around and look and see. Some of these like a brown, more than blue. There was a little doorway here. I can just exaggerate and make it 
this color. And remember the treads? Even more blue. Gonna add more blue here. So the treads. It's a you know it's a loose painting, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And I'll water this down because this color goes right up over here. And then we see that dark shadow here from the stairs. Kind of wiggles here. Go grab a little more blue. Get that really dark, crisp shadow. So it really pops, right? We can make it darker in here still. So it pops. There's quite a few different shadows you can see popping around the paper here. Just go around and fill this in. Wherever you see another shadow kind of happening here. And this is what I'm saying. You get the you add the darker color as you go. This is dark down here. And then we have this nice deep shadow back here. And under here, you can just put a little blue, right? There's shadows from the windows. We didn't paint in the pink windows, but there's a little line coming down here, like little shadows. Just wherever you see anything dark, dark shadow, take that deep color. This one's very deep right here. Again, mixing the two colors, getting pretty dark. Let me see the shadow for that. They're small, but they're effective. So again, I would grab ultramarine blue that I have, and peacock blue. Mix those two. We can brighten it up just by mixing those two. I'm not going to really add that brown color. I want to brighten it up a little more. Get them nicely mixed, or just use one solid color, which might help it also. Really lose tea consistency. And let's go back over this. Don't be afraid. We'll get more of a solid wash. If you move quickly, I'm moving fairly quickly, as you can see. Going down here. Trying to go really fast so it becomes a one solid wash. And it's a lot brighter than the first time. I bled a little bit there, but that's fine. So now it's more of a solid wash, right? If that happens to you, that's what you do. But that's it. And I'll remove my tape. See, it doesn't rip the paper. And we have our Santorini windmill. Very cute. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I hope you learned something about the values. You get the lights, the darks, and the medium. The mediums just take up the biggest shape in the whole entire picture. And just drawing out uh, the picture helps. Thank you guys. And if you enjoyed my tutorial, uh, consider joining my Patreon where I have more extensive videos, exclusive tutorials. We have a Facebook group, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's a way to support my channel here on YouTube, which I really appreciate. And you can find the link to that in the description box and you can cancel and join anytime. So thank you guys so much uh, and take care and I'll speak to you soon.